All right, guys, so let's do a follow-up of what we've done with the boiler here. So with talking with Heatmaster, so what we did was we, we try and you take this piece out, right? This is the uh, where you would put like the memory card to uh, upload like a new software. So that just slides out. You take it out. You get a different SIM card because it doesn't have one in there. You download because they sent me a different software. So I downloaded that to the SIM card. You put that in. And when you turn it back on, it automatically uploads the software, blah, blah, blah. Did that, turned it on. And you could tell that it took a little longer because it was uploading it or whatever. And I haven't really spent much time out here because I'm not just going to stand here all day. It's in a burn cycle right now. So obviously I'll stand out here as long as I'm making this video. So we're gonna try that. I did have to change some of the parameters back to what I had it at, because all that was reset, which I didn't really change anything. It was just uh, the temperature differential, that was it. I haven't played with any of the settings as far as O2 or nothing like that, because they're all pretty much the factory settings that I've been running since. I was going to change it to the driest wood setting, but I haven't done that yet because I don't want to touch anything until um, I know this thing's running as it's supposed to, so I'm just going to let it be. Um, I haven't had the kiln running for a couple days now, and I tell you what, not having that run, I go through like no wood. I mean, house is still heating, obviously. It's cold and damp, but it's a fraction what it was when it was really cold, so... Um, hoping that it was just a software thing i don't know i kind of doubt it considering why would it shut off turn back on but i don't know so the only time i've noticed when it goes on and off is when i'm out here for a couple hours and i'm here you know because even when it's at idle i've i've heard it do it right so it, i don't think it has anything to do with it actually in a burn cycle it's just it either a loses power or whatever but, you know, I did check as many as the wires that I can see. I'm not going to loosen all the wires because there's a lot on there to see if anything's burnt or loose behind it. I'm not doing that. I shouldn't have to do that, and I'm not doing that. Now, if it comes to where they're going to send me a different whole controller there, I may want to do that. I don't know if you can see it from here because this cover's on. No, you can't. But, like... There's so many wires on the bottom, the side, and on the top. I mean, if you don't put them back in right or forget which wire goes where, I mean, it's a bad day, right? So I don't care how many pictures you take of it because they're so small and tight together. I mean, I'd have to label every single one somehow. I don't know. So I'm hoping with the freaking miracle that that's all it takes to get this thing back up and running properly. I sure hope so. Um, like I said, it's still in a burn cycle. I think we got, it's halfway there, almost halfway there. So, and it's fluctuating where it needs to be. So yeah, I, uh, I hope it's back to normal, but I can tell you this, what, since I've been burning, like a lot of this, this is all the kiln, kiln dry that I had in the kiln for three, four days. Like all this, that's what this is here. So, you know, a lot of it's smaller stuff, but it's all virtually 0%. I'm sure it's regaining a little bit being out in this wet environment. But when I go into the box the next day, you can kind of tell, I don't know if it's because of how dry the wood is, that the creosote built up like on the walls. It's actually kind of going away i mean it's kind of weird i, I don't know <laughs> obviously you still get some stuff dripping down onto the panels from the walls but i feel like every because it's been about six days now that i've been burning 100 percent kiln dried nothing else that the creosote buildup's getting better i mean that's time will tell you know hopefully in the next two weeks i can kind of revisit that and see but i tell you what if that gets way better and it gets better and better i will only burn kiln dried in this i know that's like defeating the purpose of a wood boiler right but 
I think most people know that gasification units need drier wood than a typical boiler, right? So obviously there's more preparation involved. Make sure your wood's sitting for at least a year. Cut, split, stack nice so it gets a lot of airflow. Um, longer the better if you can. And once it gets to a certain moisture reading, then put it underneath the cover like I do. Like obviously this is empty now, but you know, typically this is full, full, you know, stacked as high as I can get it and all the way in here, you know. So obviously that's a little bit more messing around. You don't want your wood like this just sitting there getting all wet. Like that's all soaked now. Like you wouldn't want to bring that into here and throw it in this boiler because now you're adding a lot of moisture, you know, so. But even in a traditional boiler, you still want your wood covered. You don't want it just getting wet, right? And drier the better. It's just it's just going to be more efficient. So, so yeah, that's kind of the update. That's what that's all we've done so far. Is that computer part on there? I mean, like I said, I checked all the wires, took the panels off. Everything looked fine. There was that one wire that, on the switch that looked a little loose, but it wasn't. So I pushed it on as far as I could. Hopefully it was just that, which is kind of odd, but whatever. Maybe it jiggled loose because, you know, the shaker handle, maybe it's shaking it a little bit. I don't know. I doubt that's what it was, but who knows? Maybe it was the controller up, you know, software. I don't know. So, but other than that, I'm praying it's good to go because I've been so busy doing trees. No, I mean, it's prime time now. I mean, every day I, I got to do at least two, three quotes. And thankfully, I've gotten every single quote I've done pretty much all year. So I'm, I'm stacked probably till the end of the year already. And then the year just started, so, which is good. But uh, so, like I said, I'm, I'm not around, you know. I, I, I should have processed a bunch of wood earlier this week, but I've been just crushing trees, so I haven't had time. That's why... There's no wood in the in the kiln right now, which doesn't make me very happy, but I'm not gonna be splitting wood in this rain right now. I'm just not doing it. So that kind of brings me to why I wanna build something for the processor, so I'm indoors. I don't know. That's a little off tangent considering we're talking about the boiler here. So So yeah. I I, I I do like the unit, don't get me wrong. I know some people are just like, oh, you know, it's a lot of issues and this and that. Um, customer service and whatnot. I don't want it to sound like they haven't been helping me. You know, they have been. Um, everyone's busy, I get it, right? And then when you're frustrated with something that's not working that you paid a lot of money for, and it takes a day or two for them to get back. I get it, you know, anyone's gonna be panicking or freaking out. Um, thankfully, it's still running, you know, to the point where it's still heating the water, just not doing it as it's supposed to. Everything has issues, you know, I get it. You know, versus having just a real simple standalone boiler where you just use aquastats, you know, it's, those can fail too, but any anybody can really, you know, change those out. I'm not an electrician, so I don't know how to do all that stuff, and nor do I want to learn. I know a lot of stuff, right? I, I pretty much do almost everything around here, but when it comes to electrical and some other stuff, I pay somebody else to do it. I mean, that's not my job. I don't want it to be my job. I have enough to learn and do and manage, and so, yeah. Now, when it comes to if that controller needs to get replaced, I'll have the dealer or whoever else come out here and do it and pray that they know what they're doing. So, because if this goes down, I need it back up and running like ASAP. So, I mean, obviously we have backup heat source and all that, but I don't want to be messing around with that when this is only a year and a half old. So, it's not that I'm not going to entertain possibly a different boiler setup or a, another one. Not in place of this, but an additional one for something else. Or do I just get another larger unit? I got plenty of room here. I mean, I, this is wide open. I don't even care if it came over further, but I have all this. So if it's a bigger unit, I can do it. You know, I've had some people ask, you know, why don't I do like the wood chip boilers? Hey, those are massive units. It wouldn't work in this specific setup, but I could always put it somewhere else. I don't want to do that. 
I think a traditional boiler would be ideal, but like the largest one that's out there, like, like the Heatmaster C800, which, you know, they claim it heats up to 20,000 square feet, which would be double what this is. You know, four outlets versus two. And, and I know all the other manufacturers have something similar, right? So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's all up in the air, you know, and, but it's like, you know, I spent $18,000 on this unit, right? Even if I wanted to get a different unit, I'm going to pay that again. And then what am I going to get for this unit? So, and I'm not asking for special treatment because I make YouTube videos, you know, but I do, I do make a lot of promoting Heatmaster with this unit. You know, I've made a lot of videos on it, but I don't want special treatment. I don't want anyone to ever think that I do, because I don't. But I'm gonna tell you the good and the bad, the ugly, no matter what it is, you know, just like when I had that issue with the, with the nozzle and the creosote built up in the intake tubes. Um, I don't even know what else I've had, but it's all documented. It's I've made videos on all that, you know, it's just, you know, these take a little bit extra TLC, I guess, you know, than a traditional boiler. And if you don't want to do all that and have that, then I, I get it. But it doesn't matter because you still got to clean out a traditional boiler. You don't have to be as picky with the wood, you know. I know some other people are going to say otherwise with their gassers, but I can tell you this right now. There's probably not, there might be some people, but there's probably not a whole lot of people with the 4,000, the 7, or even the 10 that have the heat demand that I do, I can guarantee it. There's just no way, because you ain't gonna have enough wood. So, I mean, here, I mean, an example. The, I had a, a different toe here, right? That was from kiln dried. I went through that in three days. This is two days. This will be gone in a day and a half. You know, so I, I'm going through a full cord a week and a half, okay? So, now do the math on that for 52 weeks roughly that's a lot of wood okay so if you're going through that i mean it, you're doing a lot of work to prepare the wood cut it split it whatever or you're buying it and that's a lot of money so now if you're throwing in some wet wood from time to time and you're only going through seven five seven maybe ten cords of wood it's not so bad but i'm going through that in a month you know a month and a half two months so all that moisture builds up and it, it causes an issue it just does so that's why dry all gonna, my boiler wood and we're gonna see how well that goes but I can already tell it's getting better on the inside in the next couple days maybe sometime next week I'm gonna re-clean the door like around the door all that creosote built up because I did that recently and it didn't take long for it to go back readjust the door to make sure she's extremely tight because you can see I don't know how the lighting is but you can see how it's dripping right I never see any smoke come out of there or nothing, so I'm not sure. It's obviously seeping, you know, and it's not like this thing's getting wet, but that's creosote. So I'm going to clean that, adjust the door just a little bit to get it a little tighter, even though I feel like it is tight, and see if that helps with that. It's going to suck getting that clean because I don't want to scratch the, the paint or anything on there. But So, yeah, that kind of wraps up this one, guys. So, so far, so good. I've been here... You know, it's been almost 14 minutes and it's still running and she's gonna shut down. So she jumped up eight degrees in a matter of 10 minutes. She should shut off right now, actually. So, so far so good. Um, I'll probably do another follow-up video in a couple days here to see, you know, to kind of see how it goes. And I'll, I'm still in communication with Heatmaster to say, hey, it's going good or it's not. Um, I may or may not get some tree footage tomorrow. Just so you could see some of that, maybe a couple of shorts, I don't know, or dropping some nice trees, so. But yeah, hope you guys like that follow up there just to kind of give you a little insight what's going on with the boiler, so. But as always, keep burning.